you have to recognize that the Lokiriyama Peace Accord was a lot of individual efforts, community efforts, not government knee-jerk uh, operations. As of now, um, two days ago, a team from Nairobi has driven into Turkana, the usual drive-in with all the you know, armored vehicles that the local security forces do not have. They will come in. As of now, Kamuge Hills, where the incident happened, everybody's, there's nothing happening. Everybody's left, as Vaisuda has said. Everybody has left. So we'll keep running in. We had operations in um, last year. We had operations this year in Capedo. Everyone moves, everyone comes back. So I think one of the things to, to, to note is that the borders are very porous. So if you look at the Lokiriyama issue, it is a Uganda-Kenya issue. If you look at South Sudan and, and uh, Turkana West, again, another porous border. If you look at Ethiopia-Kenya, again, another porous border. So the, as much as everyone just sort of says, oh, cattle, band, you know, banditry, disarm, but you cannot disarm when you cannot assure security. There's absolutely no way you can constantly see people packing up their things and moving, and there's absolutely no security, and you keep telling them, disarm. And this is the, the saddest part, because we've seen this happen. Even myself, like this year, in February, I lost about 300 and 70 shots, mm. my own. I went to the police and I said, following the law, I have lost, they've been put a mark on the neck. Please follow it, they've gone this direction because the herders said which direction they'd gone to. And the most the police said, they went to the press and said only 50 animals lost. Okay. So as much as yes, there is efforts to achieve the peace, we can only request so much of peace efforts when the government assures of security. We cannot talk about peace because we, we NGOs will go out there and make proposals for peace. But at the end of the day, it is the role of government to provide security. All right. In July, end of July, women and children were locked in their houses and burnt in Napeto. It was a political time. Most of the aspirants and the politicians went in, took photos, social media, looking for the votes. Some are still in hospital. And those children right now, as schools have opened, they don't know what to go back to in school. And you cannot just talk about primitive. You see your own people being killed as a child. And it sticks in you that this, the enemy is the other person. Because you constantly, you see your livestock lost. You see your parents killed. You see your home burnt down. What, and nobody talks about the psychosocial. These kids are just told, wake up. I remember a few years ago, um, in, in Loyangalani. People were killed and thrown into a, a, a school. And former President Uhuru said very, a very sort of brushing statement about it. So we've seen a history. P, uh, P.S. Kibisho mentioned and said, let them be farmers. Very brushing statements that we've seen with you know, people in, in authority you know, saying. And yet, no one really says lives are lost. And, and that's so it's always a cattle race. Even the media itself just says, you know, just brushing statements, but really lives are lost and lives are impacted with such incidences. And that's why we have you to discuss the importance and, of those lives. Yeah, yeah. And, and so for us, for us from a human rights perspective, but also from a community person, that I have seen this from childhood, you know. So it's, it's, I think I got into this work because I walked into an after ambush and I found a dead mother and the baby was suckling on the mother while, you know, the mother is dead. And the baby's there crying, trying to suckle on a dead mother's breasts.